Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Baha Hashem Yahweh Shai. Baha Hashem Rakakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Much respect to the brothers laboring in this truth worldwide to wake up the elect of the children of Israel. This lesson is going to be entitled When They Say Peace and Safety. All right. And it's a, a excerpt from 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 3. And we're going to read, uh, we're going to start at verse 1. It says, But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. All right, it's going to come unexpected. It says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. All right. And the reason why I have this queued up is because of this article right here. And uh, this is from Market Watch. And this article was done November 10th, 2019. Yeah, Karagma. It says, this is the most prosperous economy the world has ever seen, says Jamie Demon. And it's going to continue, all right? That's pride, man. That's, that's, that's Esau, you know what I'm saying? One of the one of the bankers, you know, all right? <clears throat> and more than likely, he had uh, lines. You know, they like to change their name. So he, he probably go back to Amalekite, all right? They wouldn't put him in position of power for that, you know, just on GP. All right. So this quote is what really, you know, sparked me to do this lesson. It says, this is the most prosperous economy the world has ever seen. And it's going to be the be a very prosperous economy for the next 100 years. Hey, man, that's pride, man. Don't, don't, uh, we read in James where it said, uh, don't, don't, matter of fact, let's get it. I don't like bushing. Let's get it. Uh, James chapter four. Uh, yeah, come. This is James four and 13. Go to now. Ye that say today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Hey Amen. Ain't that, that, ain't that what that guy said? It's going to be the uh, prosperous, the most prosperous economy for the next hundred years. It says, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your what is your life? It is even a vapor. That appear for a little time and then vanishes away. For that ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings. All right, and that's what that guy did. He was rejoicing in his boastings. As such rejoicing is evil. All right, and we know Esau can't get right, he's the horror of death. That's all he is made to do is be wicked. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him, it is sin. And they know to do good. All right. They had this book for a long time. So they know this law, section, and commandments that the Most High set out. But that adverse, the adversaries to the Most High, Yahweh by Shabbat Shabbat. All right. Let's see. It says the consumer, which is 70% of the U.S. economy, is quite strong, he said. Confidence is very high. Their balance sheets are in great shape. And you see the strength of American consumer is driving the American economy and the global economy. All right. And while business slowed down, my current view is that no, it is not. It was like it. My current view is that no, it was just a slowdown. Not a petering out all right now you hear what this guy's saying all right now check this out 
This is the Dallas Morning News. He said that the, uh, the U.S. economy is driven by who? The consumer. All right. So check this out. That's, these are fork ton devils, man. All right. This is um, Dallas News Business. If the economy is so great, why are more Texans skipping out on car loans? All right. Says with more subprime borrowers and high loan amounts, delinquencies are rising again. The Dallas County leads the way. All right. And this, if you actually go into the research of this, man, this is everywhere, man. All right. It says, by many metrics, the economy is cruising. Unemployment remains near record lows. Jobs have been growing for more than 100 straight months. And even wages are rising. Yet, there are signs of distress. And not just in the volatile volatility on Wall Street. All right. An increasing number of borrowers are skipping their car loans. According to a recent study by the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas, like I said, you do your research. This is all over the place. All right. So if your economy is doing so good. Why are people not paying their fucking bills? All right. Let's go back to the scriptures. If your economy is doing so great, why are people not able to pay their bills, man? All right. This is Second Ezra, chapter sixteen. And verse 17, woe is me, woe is me who will deliver me in those days. The beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars, and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evil. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Behold, famine <coughs> and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. All right. And that's what's going on, man. You got different famines, different plagues, there's pestilence going on in the world. And people think it's Mother Ma mother Nation. There's no such thing as Mother Nation. Yahweh controls everything, man. All right. So you people, people are really on a low level man because you don't know the heavenly father you don't know a son going on behold victuals shall be so good cheap on earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case even then shall evils grow upon the earth sword famine and great confusion all right and that's what's going on man evils are growing on growing on the earth and this guy think the economy is doing great all right all signs say the economy is doing great, right? But when they shall say peace and safety, what? Sudden destruction is going to come, all right? For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy, and the dead shall be cast out as dumb, and there shall be no man to comfort them for the earth shall be wasted and the city shall be cast down. Yeah, and that's what's coming to this place, man. Thus saith the Lord, all right? This guy, this guy right here is so damn prideful, man. Says this is, let's, let's, let's go back to his quote. This is the most prosperous economy the world has ever seen. And it's going to be very prosperous. So like it's going to be a very prosperous economy. For the next hundred years. Well, how do you know, devil? You could you we we could be out of here at the end of this year, Lord willing. Alright? Pride, man. Pride. Alright. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, and verse 23. A man's pride shall bring him low. Alright? And that's what's gonna happen to you, Esau. You're gonna be brought real low pretty soon. Reading again. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Who's the humble in spirit? The Israelites, man. All right? And we, Lord willing, we're going to be honored in the end. All right? Lord willing, we part of that number. All right? Let's go to the book of Obadiah. Classic. Pride of Esau. That's how you identify the wicked, man. Who's the most proudful people in this world, man? Esau, Edom. 
so-called white man, all right? This is Obadiah 1 and 3. The pride of thy heart have deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, his mind, who shall bring me down to the ground? Well, guess what? It's your how about shot is going to bring you down to the ground, devil. All right? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest amongst the stars, Hence will I bring thee down, say of the Lord, Yahweh by Shabbat Shai. All right? And it's going to happen, man. Point blank period, man. Ain't nothing you can do about it, Esau. Yo, prideful, thinking you rule the world, thinking you got everything on your own strength, man. It's going to be done away with. All right? But this is Ecclesiastes of Sarah, chapter 10, verse 13. For pride is the beginning of sin. And he that have it shall pour out abomination, right? And that's that's what this guy, he's poured out, is seated abomination on the earth, man. All this wickedness is permeating on the earth, man. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous, all right? This is Ecclesiastes 10 and 13. For pride is the beginning of sin. And he that have it shall pour out abomination. And therefore the Lord, Yahweh Shabbat brought upon them strange calamities and overthrew them utterly. And that's what's going to happen. Yahweh Shabbat is going to bring upon them strange calamities and it's going to overthrow them utterly. All right? So prior to Esau, thinking his economy is going to last, thinking Babylon is healed. You get, there's no bond for Babylon. All right? Lord willing, has been edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. By Hashem, Yahweh Shai. By Hashem, we call Kadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Much respect to the brothers laboring in this truth worldwide to wake up the elect of the children of Israel. Till the next time, I say Shalom.